How you doing, folks? <clears throat> I felt, uh, How you doing, folks? Chris Askell here. And uh, what I wanted to do, and what I felt I needed to do, is give you a closer to actual update on the Chris Haskell court case, or the, as we call it, the Chris Haskell story. This is for my supporters. I want to start with thanking you once again for all the support you've given me and the, the letters you wrote and typed and everything that you've done for me, okay? But I'm going to give you a little reality check here. It didn't work out. It didn't work out real well, okay? So, odds are <clears throat> things aren't going to be working out real good for activists here. All right, I'm going to try and get through this as fast as I can. Your time is valuable, as I know. All the letters which are written and typed on my behalf, they may or not, they may have or may have not helped me, okay? But, <clears throat> as the judge made sure to mention to the people of the courtroom that Chris Haskell obviously had a lot of supporters and a lot of people that loved him. But, due to the sheer number of letters turned in on his behalf she said something to the effect of <clears throat> there were so many that due to the time restraints and her workload it would have been nearly impossible for her to actually read them all the way through <clears throat> she did finish up with be assured, every one of them was read by the Pima County court system. I know it might be a little shaky here. She made sure to say that. Okay, here's the way I'm going to do this, guys. I'm going to get right to the point and tell you what happened. <clears throat> in the least amount of words as I can to me. And then if you can go ahead and bear in there and you really wanted to hear the details, I will continue the video and go ahead and give you all the details of what hell I'm going through, okay? Because this didn't work out at all, not even slightly, okay? Here we go. The judge made a statement about all the letters. Just like I told you. It wouldn't be possible for her to read them all the way through. <clears throat> then she continued to railroad me, throw me under the bus, back over me twice, and throw what's left of me in the flames of the fire. That's what happened to me. I got completely railroaded. I'd like to right now dump, jump <clears throat> to what it is, if anyone can do anything to help me, I'm going to tell you right now what I could use, and I could use it ASAP. <clears throat> I need an, a job opportunity here in Tucson. Uh, hopefully a full-time job, because it has to be a full-time job, or two part-time jobs. They have to understand that I'm on intense probation, and I need it <clears throat> by 
about a few days from now. Okay, so that's what I want to settle on right here is, is um, who I am and what I can do. I can do just about anything. I'm pretty quick, run my own business for 13 years in Phoenix, not in Tucson. Uh, car stereo business. I also was a gold certified uh, Chrysler salesman, which by the way, I held the record. Even though I only worked there for two, I think two and a half years, I hold the record to this day of how many letters were given to the owner of the dealership. And they were incredible of how that I changed people's opinions that were scared to go to a car lot and buy a car. And they found Chris Haskell. Okay? I have qualifications in painting, pretty much any kind of construction work. I'm not, I'm pretty strong, I should say. Um, I'm uh, able bodied, so I can do just about any construction work. I can do, I'm a photographer, a videographer, I am, I'm a lot of things. But that's not even really that important. I'll prove myself to anyone that's in Tucson that can give me an opportunity to apply for a job. Um, <clears throat> I have reliable transportation now that I was given permission to get my vehicle back yesterday. Hopefully I'll get it soon. And, um, and I'm ready to do whatever it takes to get a full-time job immediately. You might even remember that I was a delivery driver. I delivered I, all over Tucson. I'm a, I'm a good driver, got a clean record. And uh, I've been you know, driving since I was 16. And um, I, I'm, I'd get a CL license if I need one. But basically, I'm an awesome driver. I am a delivery driver. I could do just about any job, so what I need is an opportunity to apply for a job. ASAP. It must be in Tucson, Arizona. It must be paid by checks through the system of our government so that I can pay for the wars which we support. So I have to pay taxes. And I'm willing to apply for just about any job. I'm an awesome customer service person. So basically I can work just about any job. I mean, I could do everything from, heck, I, I employed over, I'm guessing around 500 different employees have worked for me. I've had three car stereo stores. I have done all kinds of work. So I could be anything from management down to pouring coffee, like John said. I need an opportunity to apply with someone. I'll prove myself. I don't need to sit here and give you a week's worth of my qualifications. Nobody will fire me if they hire me because they'll love the heck out of my work. Okay? There's to the point. Um, so please, if you have a job that I might be able to work and do, and it must be in Tucson, Arizona, you must understand that I am under intense probation. I'm a serious criminal now. I have no priors, not a one. Nothing over maybe a, a, a misdemeanor, but anyway, here nor there, I would really appreciate it if someone either has a job or knows somebody who knows somebody that might have a job in Tucson. Because you'd really, really be surprised at what I can do. And I need to prove myself to my probation officer. ASAP, okay? That's the gist of it. That's what anybody could do for me. Um, yeah, they, they've they given me permission to go get my vehicle, but there's one little issue. I'm totally broke. I know a lot of people have supported me in so many ways, and they sent, what, about over $9,000 to me. And I paid it all to the lawyer. I'm very sorry that I did that because I never should have. He did nothing for me, basically, okay? I'm not, I know you can see my pain. 
So I need to say no more about that. They have just destroyed my life almost completely. But I, you know what? I'm better than them. I'm awesome. I'm special. And a lot of people love me. I know it. Because you supporters have proven that to me. This is my new house. This is what they allowed me to live in. Anyway, that or a halfway house, because I cannot go to my father's house for the next three years. Yeah, my father is 87 years old. Both my other two siblings, the, the other two children he has, live over an hour away from him. So they can't help him. So he's got nothing now. I took care of him every day in any way he needed and f basically cooked for him every day. Took care of the house. Okay? I can't see my father for the next three years. I have been placed on intense probation. I don't need that anymore. I have been placed on intense probation. I have been placed on one year of house arrest. I cannot leave my new home for even to go to the grocery store. For no reason personal whatsoever. The only thing I can do is leave to see my probation department. I have to have a full-time job 40 hours a week. Need it immediately or they're gonna make sure that I am looking for a job. Okay? I cannot talk to anybody on the phone. No friends whatsoever unless I give them one week's notice to the date and time I'm going to call them. Okay? And prior to me being able to be allowed to call my friends, I have to they have to do a background check on them. So I've had to tell my friends, if you want to be on my list, to where I have to tell them a week in advance of who I'm going to call and talk to, then I need their personal information, birth date and everything, and they're going to do a background check on them. And they have to have no felonies. Okay, so there's the beginning can't go to my dad's house for the next three years. Cannot call my father on the phone. Doesn't matter, they're not gonna prove it. I can't call my father for over a year, they told me. I'm under house arrest for first year. Can't drink any alcohol. They test me every day. I have to call a number and task every day to see if they're gonna test me for, for drugs. That'd be a urine test. So I have to call every day, and if they <clears throat> tell me that I have to test, then I have to pay for the test. To get my vehicle back, I owe them a bunch of money for towing my vehicle. I owe them money for storing my vehicle. I told them, I ain't paying one penny to get my vehicle back. They said, that's fine, you don't need to get it back if you don't want it. That's the options I have. And I can't go pick up my vehicle. I need people, you know, the friends that I can't call. Huh, how's that gonna, okay. Anyway, they have to go do it for me. I can't go pick up my clothing. So I got about two pairs right now of clothing, one pair of shoes and no socks. They forgot to get my socks. I cannot go back to our cabin at Mount Lemon under any circumstances for the next three years. Where does it go from here? I think it's pretty much enough, I heard. So, well, like things like today, my dad asked for his dog back. I sent a message back no, I'm keeping my dog. So I got, <clears throat> I went to my probation office today. 
and I saw him and everything was all good. And when I left there, I got a phone call from him and he said, Sir, your dad wants his dog back. I said, okay. And he said, so here's the thing. The dog is his property. He said he paid for the dog. So, you've got a matter of hours. If you do not have his property, my dad's property, returned to him, immediately I will be charged with a crime for stealing. And at that point, I have broken probation, and he will ensure me that I will be given a ride, not to jail, but now that I have broken my probation, I have failed, I lose my rights to own a gun, and I will be escorted not to jail, but to prison. And I will remain there for three years. If I do not have my dog back within a few hours, pretty much. Okay? So here we go. This is my life. I don't have any money to get my van back. I need a job and I'm confident someone will give me an opportunity to apply for a job and hopefully within the next couple days. You can email me at haskellfilms at yahoo and that has a Z on the Haskell film so it spells like this H-A-S-H-A-S-K-E-L-L-F-I-L-M-Z at yahoo.com. If you email me, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to go through the application system. If somebody's running their own business and he's small, they can just do whatever. Just You need to understand that I'm on IPS for the next three years. Um, they do a background check, I guess they said, on the business too. So, so there's the deal. Um, I will want to warn anyone. At this point, it's open game, open game on all activists. Because if any one of you is successful in warning as many people as I was successful in doing, the odds are you're screwed. They're going to arrest you, break your knuckles when you don't sign their plea agreements, steal your vehicle, take your house, Look for anything else that you might have illegal. Gee, they never found anything on me when they searched three places I live. Every snook and cranny kicked in the doors to three of my friends' houses, didn't even bother because they were at work, leaving them a note to tell them that it was the FBI and the police that kicked their doors in. Okay? This is the way it is. I don't know how we're going to fix it because good odds are we're not. Folks, they have broke me. They have broke me. I hope I make it through this. I really do. I want to ask you to do a few things. Number one, make this video go viral. Make it go across the world, please. Because it's not just Tucson. People know people in Tucson that run a business. People know people that can help. I could use a different place to live. Any place, pretty much. As long as they approve it. And it has to be in Tucson. My job has to be in Tucson. My job has to be up and up. Has to be taxes. They said I'm going to be giving them the check. And when they're done deciding what I owe them out of it, they'll give me back the rest. Special. Cannot have my job back that I've been doing for the last five to seven years as a delivery driver because I am on IPS and if for some reason they could, God forbid, give me my job back, okay? IPS said, I'm sorry, but I can't approve that because you're gonna be driving all over the city and we can't have that. Now let me get back to one minor thing. The judge, after stating all those nice things about the letters, said, I find Mr. Haskell 
Christopher Haskell, I find to be a danger to the public. This is not because of the way I reacted. This is nothing to do with how I handled this. It had nothing to do. This is the reality, folks. It had nothing to do with what I did to react and I didn't group with the right people and get the right lawyer. Nothing to do with any of that, folks. Because they stiffed me, stuck me under the bus and backed over me twice. There's the reality, take it as you want. I appreciate the heck and everything that all my supporters did and did. I, I appreciate every dollar, everything. It's come in handy. I'm sorry I gave it to a corrupt lawyer, okay? But I am gonna ask one more time. I need your help. Make this go viral. Number two, if you have a job for me, possibly, I will apply. I'm not gonna ask for free money. I want to work my rear off, and I am good at a lot of things. I'll prove that to whoever it is who wants to hire me. Yeah, this ain't got a real good background on this video, and it's shaking like heck, but let's see how many people watch this. Because I don't care about the background. I need some help. If you have enough money you can afford to donate, hey, maybe I can get my vehicle back. Because they said, well, it's my option. I can go ahead and not get my vehicle back. I don't know how much yet it's going to cost me, but it's going to be a tow and all storage for all this time. And by the way, uh, the state charges that I got for, number one, my supporters putting up signs for me, and number two, for my brother doing that special deed, proving who he was, um, and because I put his information publicly on the internet. That was not the right thing to do, I agree. I wouldn't do it again if you gave me a chance at it, but those charges are still here. They didn't drop them. Matter of fact, I have to go to court in a couple days for those charges. My probation officer was nice enough to let me go. To court for it so and I'll probably be found guilty I'm just taking a guess but I who knows they didn't drop them they didn't do nothing they stiffed me the whole deal went bad I got three years intense probation so I'm sorry if you most of you probably had already got rid of got off this video a long time but I need some help if you could give any donations please do I would really appreciate it. Even if it's a loan, I'll pay you back because I'll have a job, that's for sure. So I love you guys. I hope, I hope our world gets better. But to tell you the truth, I doubt it. So thank you very much. Make this go viral. Tell people the truth about the Chris Haskell story. It had nothing, in my opinion, to do with my reactions and the way I do things. So I'm going to keep doing things my way, whether people like it or not. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. There is the Chris Haskell story. It's not completely over yet, but yes, I have been convicted of terrorist charges when the fact is I did nothing illegal and obviously nothing wrong. Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing. I also have to do 40 hours a month of community service to pay back. Because like the judge said, it is her opinion. She said this at the end of the sentencing. It is her opinion that Chris Haskell is a danger to the public and to society. He is now to be retained into custody. They handcuffed me and dragged me out of the courtroom where I went directly to jail. And then, after a few minutes, because selfish old Chris, I hit my bed 
split my hand, broke my broke my hand, and I went directly to a facilitation on the end of their jail where they checked my mental sanity. And by the way, I have an appointment next week to go see a psychologist. And then they locked me up in solitary because of me hitting my bed. So there we have it. High rolled, run over, thrown under the bus and backed over twice. And that's what we get for being one of the best activists in the world. Thank you. I love you all and have a nice day.